primary treatment options for advanced uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the skin have been surgery when possible. The goals of surgery are not only to obtain clear margins, uh, but also to assess the nodal basin. In addition, uh, as I pointed out, many of the high-risk features of advanced squamous cell carcinoma of the skin come from the pathology specimen that the surgeon provides. And so perineural invasion, uh, differentiation status, margins, uh, thickness, six millimeters greater or less than, uh, these are features that we really only get by the surgical specimen. And so we've tended to bias our upfront therapy uh, to incorporate surgery where possible. Radiation therapy is often used in the adjuvant setting when margins are questionable uh, or when uh, an R0 resection cannot be obtained. Uh, chemotherapy has been uh, relatively underutilized for squamous cell carcinoma, although it appears to have some efficacy, much as it does for squamous cell carcinoma of other regions, such as the mouth and throat. Um, we've also, uh, since uh, 2006, the EGFR-specific antibody cetuximab, which was FDA-approved for mucosal squamous cell carcinomas, has begun to be used for advanced and in some cases unresectable uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. So the EGFR inhibitor cetuximab uh, is a systemic therapy. Uh, often it's combined with local radiation therapy, whether surgery can be done or not, whether it's in a non-surgical palliative situation or in the post-operative adjuvant to reduce rates of local regional recurrence. And then most recently, FDA approval for the anti-PD-1 antibody, the immunotherapy semiplumab, which uh, targets the uh, inhibitory PD-1 receptor in the immune system and reactivates the immune system against cancer. And PD-1 inhibitors have been FDA approved for seven or eight other cancers. And so adding the PD-1 inhibitor semiplumab for aggressive uh, skin cancers, either unresectable locally advanced or uh, for uh, metastatic disease uh, has been uh, a new transformation and, and an additional modality in the armamentarium for the oncologist. So when considering excision versus Mohs surgery in our practice, we follow the well-established criteria. So we're looking at tumor location again, which is uh, following the guidelines that have set been, been set forth, tumors on the central face, tumors in, on the ears, uh, tumors, for example, on the genital areas or on the uh, hands and feet uh, are all candidates for most surgery. If a tumor is recurrent, the tumor has actually come back in the same location, that's another thing that will throw us over to the most surgery side. Uh, if a tumor is poorly differentiated, for example, is another reason why the tumor uh, we prefer to do most surgery in cases uh, such as this. Um, also, uh, tumors that are uh, uh, excessively large uh, are going to definitely be treated with most surgery. And the patient's status uh, is another, you know, another factor. So if a patient is immunocompromised, again, that, that seems to play uh, a big role in whether we are going to perform most surgery because in someone who's immunocompromised, the patient who doesn't have a, the, the immune system to uh, handle any possible micrometastases or satellite uh, lesions that could be coming, we want to make sure that we have a very clear margin and give them the highest chance for cure. Uh, the risk of uh, distant metastasis is relatively low in cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma in the general population. If we looked at the rates in those with chronic immunosuppression, either due to chronic lymphocytic leukemia or to pharmacologic immunosuppression, that rate goes up uh, 50 to 100 fold. And so the risk of aggressive disease and metastatic disease, and that can be either dermal metastasis, which we think is uh, equivalent to uh, a distal distant metastasis to uh, an unrelated organ, that we need to encompass all of that. And I think our numbers are probably not as accurate as they could be because only recently in the past year or two have major centers like ours really coalesced uh, a group who does appropriate distant metastasis imaging and follows these patients in a multidisciplinary setting. 
So although it's the minority, it's probably uh, 5% or less, when you get into higher risk groups, that number actually increases. And in fact, aggressive, metastatic, unresectable skin cancer is the single greatest cause uh, of mortality in the organ transplant population. It's not the failure of the organ, it's their uncontrolled skin cancer. What percentage of patients are curable with surgery? So um, we speak more of curing lesions than of curing patients. Uh, looking at an individual lesion, we make a decision on a case-by-case -case basis of whether we think that uh, lesion is uh, curable via surgery or whether other modalities are, are necessary. So, um, you know, the, we have, see the range of small tumors that are easily ex excised and cured quite easily uh, or, you know, a surgery a tumor that we can treat with most surgery and, and get a clear margin on that would give us a high rate of confidence uh, in our ability to cure that particular lesion. Of course, you never know whether that lesion could recur in the future, so you always have to follow the patients very carefully over time. So cure is a really hard word to really, uh, really hard word to define. And so I can only answer that question with, it depends. The number of patients who are curable with advanced uh, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma, uh, I think is increasing. We've begun to understand better how to use EGFR inhibitors like cetuximab. Our radiation oncologists have gotten better at uh, perineural invasion and radiating the path, pathways of spread along these major nerves, particularly in the head and neck when it's cranial nerves going to the skull base. And uh, I also think that the new FDA approval of immunotherapy is going to add uh, a real survival advantage because of the immune memory that the PD-1 inhibitors provide unlike the biologics and radiation therapy where the benefit tends to go away when the treatment stops. The anti-PD-1 therapies have durability uh, and uh, in fact uh, can give long-term, in some cases, cure.